me. What, what is this place? Where am I? Let me explain myself. The other room is getting renovated, so there may be a little bit of an echo on this. But just bear with. We're only here for a while. As Charlton Athletic are the next team to rebuild in FIFA 23 right here. The side have always really been near the championship and top of League One, but they're struggling in League One at the moment. This is a rebuild with nothing around it. We've got the red out for the occasion as we've got a 3.2 million budget, but high board expectations. Is that where it's going wrong at the Valley? I'm guessing that's where it potentially could be as here is Dean Holden being welcomed in by all the media people. We've got to get working right here and lift this team up to the Prem. And this can't possibly be the team that we're rebuilding. There's no one really stand out. We've got Hector maybe and Raksaki, but I'm pretty sure he's on loan. The best team we can build is actually this. We've got Sessegnon in the team, of course. We've got Blackett Taylor on the wing. Macaulay Bonner striker. That's got me a little bit concerned. If our academy player could be a striker, that would be good. Let's have a check right here. Oh, no, he isn't. But Harley Sutton is 75 overall. He's a winger, so he's on the position of Raksaki. But of course, he gets in front of him. I'd be mental not to promote him. Yeah, he's on loan from Crystal Palace, and that has to be one of the best gems we've ever got in a career mode. He looks like everybody else does. Every free agent looks like that. We could try and change him into a striker, but he's not got great shooting. Looks like a winger, he is. A lot of players on loan as well, which I'm not a big fan about. We've got to try and get some permanence in. And the board actually want us getting automatically promoted. That's actually not what I expected. Okay, so we have got to spend this money. And the one position we really do need is a striker, I'm thinking. So welcome to the club, the new man. We're stealing him from a team in this division. A rival team, really. And he used to kind of be a midfielder, so he's... Getting a good shot at it. Welcome to the club from the gas. Aaron Collins has joined for just under 2 million. So it's a big chunk of his budget. But we needed him in. And our academy player and striker have literally just shot this team up in my expectations. Just in time as well before we try and start our promotion push somehow. With Lincoln City. Uh, the horrific team. Really don't like this team. Never ask me to rebuild them as please. Yes! There's the signing score in two. Collins with both of them. And the imps are sunk. Super strong signings to starters off. That's a tongue twister. As we've also got another forward player from a rival in this league. Welcome Femi Aziz. I think that will be both signings. Only coming over from Reading who were just recently relegated. I'm happy with them too. And we've spent that much. We've only got 35k left in the bank. Only two players as well. Charlton's money situation not as good as I thought. And I am going to try and get straight into this season. The season that we do want to get promoted with that team right there. I honestly think it's good enough. Two little additions. Maybe another centre-back in January. And we are still actually in the Papa John's Trophy come mid-table. Oh, mid-season, should I say. Skip straight to it. <laughs> well... It looks like our right winger through our academy is pretty good. Six points clear of Reading, who we've just signed Aziz from, and Derby County. What, 13 points behind? I like being in this new room, despite a little bit of an echo, because it actually makes us do better in this. I honestly thought we'd be around 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, just trying to push for the playoffs, but no. Clear as day. This is absolutely phenomenal. You can see Sutton. It's all carried by him. Archie Collins is doing okay for himself. The midfield and defence aren't stand out. But then again, I do think they'd survive in the championship. But a decent enough academy for a starter academy as well. With Jorge Caballero, the Bolivian. Going to get him promoted. 21 goals already for Aaron Collins. Fair to say it was a decent signing. And I actually thought we'd be sat here with a trophy. We are promoted. Maybe on head-to-head. -head. I don't know because the goal difference is the same. Well, we've scored actually three more goals than Derby County. And are promoted to the championship. But it's got to be said that's disappointing that we lost the title to the Royals. Even after signing one of their wingers. Very clear. We've got some teams there in the playoffs and we've avoided them. We've got to be happy at the end of the day. Got to be happy as the FA Cup. Hull City losing 3-2 again in the final. Disappointing for them. Rotherham doing very well and Luton. As Manchester City get a double winning the 3-2 Carabao Cup final as well with Luton doing well. Such a cup team. As we don't win the Papa Johns, it will not be won. Are we anywhere near? Lost to Bradford on penalties. 
Don't see any sign of Grimsby as well. They are the teams in the playoffs, if you want to know them. And we definitely have signings to make, but I want to see 33 goals in the end for Aaron Collins. What a player he's been. Signed straight away as Blackett Taylor's decent. And I think we'll lose Harley Sutton, I can't lie. I'd love to keep him here, but I think he will go as a good loan deal for Charlie Kirk. Maybe that's his replacement. What's expected of this season? We've got to get mid-table in the championship. All right, the board somehow upset after our first season promotion as they want a crucial forward. When I scored 33 goals last year, I'm guessing it does mean that we've got to sell our uh, winger, of course. Sutton as 12 million is quite a bit for Charlton to have, so I appreciate the money they've given us. Not the expectations. I've got three players that I definitely do want to sign going into this season. But another thing before we get going right here, I actually want to afford a scout. So let's get one going. Elliot Welch for nine months in England. Good job. I'd rather go for a winger such as this man who we've signed. Moritz Bronny Kowateng. I'm just going to call him Moritz. Very good. From the German second division. Without Sutton in the team, the team still looks very bright. We definitely don't need to touch the attack now. It's defenders, goalkeeper and midfielders. And our defender will not join the club before. Hull City at home to start our championship campaign. I don't know how to look at this season, but we're in the press conference. Trying to make this maybe a little bit easier. How's it going to go? They will have a decent team. We've got an injured player on the bench and a draw to be fair. Penu steps in for the injured midfielder, actually grabs a goal. That's great before we sign our next man. Of course, we've got the winger from Germany, Moritz. And now we've got a player from the division we were just in moments ago. Welcome to the club, Cashin. I think it's Ethan Cashin from Derby County. We'll soon see. It's cost us a bit. It's Owen or Iren. Cash in? I don't know how you say that, but 3.25. Squad's looking definitely a lot better. We've definitely got a thicker squad with a lot more players. And I've just realised I had Sutton on the bench. He's still here. I still do want to use him, and I'll use him from the left wing. There we go. Just pain to replace, although he did inflict pain on Hull City. And don't think after cash in that we're done there with defenders. I think we've got a very good bit of business here. Luke Mbete of Manchester City for 2 million. That isn't the midfielder, however. This is. We've signed Harrison Burrows from Peterborough. So they're still in League One, I think. So a decent bit of business. Only Hector's yet to sign another contract for next year, but I think we can pass that hurdle when we get to it. Get the 19-year-old on the bench and Burrows a 21-year-old midfielder for pain. I am sorry to him. Just steps forward for this amazing team to hopefully survive. And it's all right. We are eight points clear of Birmingham City. But come on, Charlton. We should be doing a lot better than that. I didn't even realise Derby got promoted with us. And we took cashing off them, but he's not doing too, too better for himself. I mean, Reading a 16th. They're kind of clear. We're in danger. I think it is time we sell Sutton on as well. I know you guys do like me sometimes to keep the free agents, but that could do a lot to change our squad around. I think we need a new keeper. Maybe fullbacks now are the issue because they are looking kind of low rated. Hector won't sign another contract and Mbete is just getting better. And here he goes. 70 million to Seville. I, I just couldn't turn it down, could I? He's out, he's Harley Sutton. Maybe our paths cross again sometime soon. But now we've got 66 million given back to us from the board to spend to try and take this team clear of relegation. So, welcome to the club next season. We've literally got all that money and signed a free signing in Gimba. But two that are coming now is the first one from Nottingham Forest. It's Brerian Ojeda for almost 5 million. And for 5.5, our number nine, new number nine, Jessic Nagankam. Yes, we're getting a German thing going here at Charlton. And we actually did finish above Reading. A derby counter going down. Sorry about taking cash in, but we had to cash in on him. Uh, four points. It's done, isn't it? We really knew that season was over. As Arsenal win the FA Cup, I think we lost to Arsenal straight away. As Brighton with the Carabao over them on penalties. Congratulations to them. As there's the playoff teams in our division. Blackburn, Preston, good luck to them too. I am rooting for them. It's a rebuilder now that we really need to go on. And 14 goals from Moritz. We've definitely got a kick on this season. Especially with the money that the board kind of gave us. As they want to fight for promotion. 
They also want critical youth and brand exposure. This board's expectations are high. No wonder they're never satisfied. As 48 million, they've even scraped 10 million away from us. And this season, we know we're getting Brimmer in from Germany. But that won't be it. First position, right at the back. Goalkeeper, that is. So we've gone ahead and got Angel Cordoba from Salzburg. Only 3 million for him. But he's not the only one coming on the same day. Number 37, Dennis Hussein Basic, another German player. We're just going to call Dennis. We'll get to see the squad here as we're putting the players in. And it's definitely worth saying cashing was good with money because he is actually now into the international spot. So we've got too many good midfielders. Hussein Basic doesn't fit in and Gimba doesn't fit in over a Jada. I'm going to try and move him to a midfielder and add Gimba as the captain because I do think he can do the business. And then Cordoba in goal. And don't worry, we're still going to spend the 37 million we've got left after Sheffield Wednesday, a game which we've simply got to try and win to get off to a decent season. We need to be up there fighting for promotion, and Aaron Collins starts that. Brilliant, 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 as this is a brilliant play coming into the door. We've spent, what is it, eight figures on this man? Kozlowski, a number eight now for us, coming from Brighton Hove Albion. The Polish, well, he's an attacking midfielder, but we're going to change him to a winger is here for Athletic. Here he is going straight in. He covers a couple of positions, but he's definitely going to try and squeeze on that wing. Completing a brilliant team so far, but the fullbacks still need attention. And after back-to-back -back defeats against Millwall and West Brom, we actually do get another player through the door. This one, a well-known one, Jamal Lewis from Newcastle on the cheap. With the final one being Javier Montoya as a right back. The regen of the other Montoya who I'm pretty sure was at Real Betis. Huge squad now. A very huge squad but I am happy with the first team. That team needs to be challenging for playoffs minimum. And this has to be changed. This has to be changed. Ninth so far in the championship is not where we want to be saying that one point off Watford in the playoffs. We should be in the playoffs. 55 points, Southampton and Nottingham Forest. So no one is running away with the league. I mean, we are quite a bit off, but not impossible. Definitely not as the team. Oh, it's all over the place. Maybe we've actually got too many players and that can actually ruin morale. So the start of this year is just a clear out of players. Please, please, please. Oh, we did make the playoffs. How lucky are we as a team? The squad's still huge, but we've sold quite a few players. We've also called up some from the academy to keep the board on our side as the team should be getting promoted through these playoffs. Save some money up as well this season, but Watford... At least we can't play them in the final. So how's it going to go at our place first? The Valley. If you're a Sidemen fan, you know about that as it's not Harry Lewis, but it's Lewis, the left back who scored with Ngankam. Just need it to go well now at Vicarage Road. Please, we know what we should have here. We've lost, but Ngankam's goal plays vital to get to Wembley. And it's Preston. Okay, so this would have been like a League One playoff kind of game maybe a decade ago. Interesting final. Can't wait for this one. Are we going to be able to beat Ryan Lowe's men? We do! Brady and Ajeda, ex-Premier League with Nottingham Forest, sends Charlton up to the promised land. We've done it. Second time of asking, but Charlton Athletic, Premier League. Oh, and we only just snuck through the playoffs. Watford and Norwich were actually top of the playoffs and they got knocked out in the semis. Lol, as Man United win the FA Cup and the Carabao... Manchester City over Villa. 31 goals as well for Ngankam. What a winger he's turned out to be. Yes, we trained him as a right winger. As Archie Collins with 22. He's going to be a Premier League player. And Hussein Basic with 10 from midfield. Premier League with Charlton and the board still aren't happy. As it's going to be, yes, avoid relegation. We can do that. Sign a crucial midfielder or forward. Okay. And then always the youth development with this bloody athletic. How much money have we been given? 79 million. Okay, I know we saved some money and sold some of them players in the squad last season. But I didn't expect that much. And we're going to start off with two regen players. Because I know some of you guys don't like them. Some do. But I know a lot just like the youth academy approach with them. I'm going to try that. Maybe very soon, as Kleber Reese is the first player from Vestero. He's a young centre-back, as the next one's going to go into the first team. It is Joaquin Iglesias from Royal Antwerp, 75 overall, only 20-year-old. Big fan of those two, going straight on the bench. I mean, Iglesias, I said he was going to go into the first team. 
It's only really if Gimba steps out, which to be fair, we can step him out because Ajeda could play DM before. He should be able to play there again. Or we could just move him up in the middle. Oh, maybe this. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Just go attacking in the middle. Speaking of, will Collins be good enough for this season in the Prem? And will Mbete and Cordoba? I guess we'll see if our players are good enough after Newcastle as the first tester. Let's see if we can beat them. I don't really recognize their striker. Okay, the May surprises with a regen maybe as it is a draw. It's Fred the black and white at the moment, not the red, and Nakangam with ours. But I think out of all the signings that we've made so far in this current save, this tops everything. This is very exciting. This is... Oh. I just can't believe it. Charlton Athletic on deadline day for 27 million, signing Rasmus Hoyland from Atalanta. Aaron Collins has been perfect for us, but it's just, it just wasn't cutting it for me. We need Hoyland to take that next step. And although we've got a weak centre back and goalkeeper, I'm going to trust it for this season and see if we can reach mid table. I'll take that. I will say that we've only suffered eight defeats so far this season halfway through with them two players in the team. You can see we're above Leeds on goal difference. Only two wins is a problem. One came against Liverpool. I do know that as a fact. Who are second in this league? Yeah, we're doing okay. We want to check the squad of them two players. No, they haven't risen at all. That's an issue. Now even Reese on the bench is higher than Mbete, so I might step Reese into the team. Cordoba and Hoyland, and then of course uh, and Gankum, definitely our best players in this team. And Ajeda. Oh, we've actually got some decent ratings further forward. We've got 36 million still to spend, however, so if it's not working, we're gonna try and fix our issues here. So one signing. I'm gonna trust the keeper we've got, but Amos Piper or Amos Piper from Werder Bremen, 11 million. Even though Reese has stepped in, he should be more convincing. I'm really just hoping that this team can keep us in the promised land of England. Yes! We have done it. We've actually survived in the Premier League. Trusting our keeper was good enough as Southampton going down again. Brighton all the time in these saves and Forest, but we're just below Leeds. We're above Palace and Brentford. 39 points after 38 games. Just what we needed this season. As Arsenal beat Fulham in the FA Cup, Fulham are actually in the Championship. I looked at signing Diop from them, I won't lie, as Arsenal winning the Carabao. Okay, an Arsenal season. As Ngankum top scorer for us with 17 goals. I knew it would be close between everyone, but Archie Collins actually in second, who beat Hoyland, even though Hoyland had two less games. He got less assists as well. Need more from Rasmus against uh, or alongside Kasper Kozlowski, who's done well, and Hussein Basic, who sits behind them. I don't know if I agree with that one. Sign a crucial defender at the start of this season. I mean, we've just got another one in in Pfeiffer, and of course, we've got some growing as they want us to grow as a team. Mid table, and then. Um, make loads of profit. How much money have we actually been gifted though? 65 million. It's a lot more than usual. So I'm going to do what the board want and I'm going to sign this crucial defender up to the team. Welcome the American defender Richards. I think it's Tyler Richards. I'm not too sure, but he's joining from Crystal Palace. They were below us. It's Chris Richards actually, and we've got him on the cheek. And Brewery and Ajay has just left us. So we've got to get a midfielder in and I've just chased down a keeper. Justin Bigelow. And we actually don't have a midfielder. For Sheffield United, the first game, Burrows is in there. I've got to trust Hoyland to try and drag us through. But of course we lose without our team fully ready yet. In a team, well, in a season we need to get mid-table. The team's not good enough. We have managed to get an Ojeda replacement in though swiftly after. Because we really needed it. And it is Jakub Moder. So like Kozlowski... He's a Polish midfielder coming from Brighton. And this is going to be our team for this season, actually. We've only got three players under the rating of 80. What an improvement, or gradual improvement, shall we say. And this is more like it. We're 10th in the Premier League. We're top half as it stands, but we still need to keep on going. We're, what is that, seven points off Newcastle, who are in seventh. That is the position we want to be in. Try and just maybe scrape some European football. I'm really hoping we can because we don't have much money left, do we? We have 11 million, which isn't really enough for a quality player. We do have an injury to Richards as well. Chris at the back, not very good. I mean, the rest of the team, the attack especially, 
Very good. And I tell you what, we've grabbed that seventh place spot. We've broke just beneath the Sky Sports top six, which is the top six. 59 points. We're so far off Spurs. So we've got our fingers tightly crossed that one of the top six has won both the Carabao and FA Cup. Actually start with the Carabao as well. Be a bit interesting. Liverpool did win it. We're nowhere near in the FA Cup, please. Manchester City won that. We were in the semi-finals and lost to Man United, but I honestly don't care, really, because we should be in Europe. Again, fingers tightly crossed it works out that way for us. As his team, 25 goals for Rasmus Hoyland. He's finally coming into his own. Same with Kozlowski on that wing. He's actually a winger now. And Hussein Basic. Get on him for career mode. He is unstoppable. And they want us to win the Conference Cup. We're, of course, in the Conference, not the Europa League. And they want us in the Europa League through the league. So it's all weird leagues. I mean, looking at the team, probably not, actually. We definitely do need a left back, maybe. And an attacking midfielder. And maybe another winger, just to be sure. And after contracts this season, we've got 80 million. And this season, we need a midfielder to start off with. So... You might guess from his face, it's Maxence Kakare from Southampton in the Championship. That's what our money goes towards first. 41 big ones. And bad news has struck us right here as we're trying to get a defender in. Dennis Hussbeins... Who oh, messed up his name in the final time, I have to say it. Is left on his release clause being paid. At least that does give us the money for Odilon Kasuu who's come from PSG. And with Everton's relegation, we've stole their midfielder to replace ours. Davide Fratesi comes along. This team looks so much better. So much better. I'm going to trust Lewis just for now at left back, but he's the next one gone. As I lose connection to the servers, we don't have an easy start right here. We've got Manchester United. This is going to dictate how we do. We've still got one signing, hopefully cooking, as we've lost. And I've lost the bloody internet. And at least we've got time to get his left back in. And he should go straight into the team. And he's an ex-Man United player. Tyrell Malassia has come from BVB. Yeah, I lied. I said I was going to trust Lewis. I don't actually trust him. He's coming on deadline day. He is 80 rated, but too little, too late, my friend. You are getting the replacement you need from Tyrell. Just got to see the Conference League now before we get going. We've got Hearts and Taliaspor. And Zagable Lubin as a team. All right. I think that's a decent group. And of course, I always fancy our chances in this. And hey, I will take fifth in this Conference League football season. That is a good position to be in. How's the squad looking? It's good. Some really good players. The only problem is we need to step over like the 85 rating. How are we doing in that competition? However, that is really what I want to focus on. We finished second. So have we got a preliminary round? Yes, we're at the bottom right there. AAB. Okay, we've, we've fallen to hearts who went unbeaten. That wasn't what I really expected to be fair, but the squad is still looking very good on paper. We just need to keep on going and I'll see if we get into a semi-final because six million Ain't enough to buy players with. And we have made that semi-final. We beat Marseille on penalties. And Roma is the team. Jose Mourinho is never, ever easy to beat. We had them in the final of the Champions League not long ago in a save. But we've won 2-1. But can we win on aggregate? That's the only thing that matters, even though we won the first leg. I thought that was Hoyland getting a red card. It's Ostergaard. And Hoyland actually scored the goal. And Frankfurt is the game that we have in the final. Charlton versus Frankfurt in the Conference League. Wonder if this can happen in real life soon. Please give us a victory right here. Please give us a trophy in the bank against Frankfurt. Get in. Nagankum against the team from his actual nationality. But he's over here in England, ripping it up for Athletic. All we need to do now is check the league, which comes straight up. We're in fourth. Never mind the Europa League. We will skip that one out, shall we, Charlton? Champions League by a point over Liverpool. We've done it. We've actually got there. Absolutely buzzing with that one. As City win the FA Cup. They're going to just dominate, I'm guessing. Yes, they won the Carabao as well. And the Champions League itself. City are in the final. They're the team to beat. I don't think we'll be beating them anytime soon unless Hoyland can beat Haaland somehow. 30 goals for Rasmus this season. As for Ates, he got 19 from his uh, stint at Everton to us. He's come very well. As Nakangum's done well. And Kolozowski in double digits for both. Finishing a Champions League place. And win the FA Cup is low priority. 
and reach the Champions League finals medium. Okay. All right, then, and sign a midfielder. I think we need defenders more, though. And then youth development. We failed last year. That's a weird one. As looking at our squad, we've got quite a bit of money, I'm guessing, from winning the competition just then against Frankfurt. So I'd go for another defender, midfielder, and winger. £183 million. Let's get to work in spending this. So we're going to start off with that midfielder. Guess what? Another ex-Brighton man. They've got such a good squad as Moises Caicedo joins from AC Milan. Now we can go to one DM in this formation. Just beautiful. But he does get in for another next brighton player. Moda dropping out. And while the board's crucially angry at us, the next one through the board is Milan Skriniar. We've got him on the cheap for 25 mil. As the last one is here as well, coming from Crystal Palace. No, it's not Raksecki. It's actually this man, relegated, I think. Matteo Cancellieri is back in this career. Previous huge favourite of mine completes this squad. This team needs to be going for the Champions League title. Yes, no 90 rated, but it's good enough. And yeah, just them three players before Liverpool to start off this league with. Are we going to win the league? I mean, the board don't expect it. Come on, let's give it a good go. Why not eh? a draw with Liverpool? Simmons... And Hoyland. Got a feeling that man's going to be pretty crucial to us. And nothing else to really shout home about. Literally, we've just been playing games in that oof, in that league start. But look at that for a Champions League group. Juve, Celtic and Slava Praha. It's going to be a struggle to get out of our group. And is it where we want to be halfway through? Because we've just simmed straight on. FA Cup is next. You can see ninth. Oh my days, 11 points off Arsenal. Okay, so that's not good, but we are through in the Champions League group. So we've got Hoyland X Team Atalanta. Interesting, we've got a bad side of the draw right there. That, draw, that side of the draw is actually okay, apart from Barcelona and Dortmund, Milan. I mean, we, we did finish top of the group. Juve second, Celtic crash out with 10 points. You've got a feel for them. Napoli's out, Bayern Munich's out. Look at that for a group, that's a weird one. Um, yeah, a couple of teams going out. I mean, Man City's still in. That's not good. And the first game away in Italy, Stadio Classico. I'm guessing that's not the stadium name as they aren't licensed in this game. It's going to be a 2-0 win. Nakangam still doing the business. He was on the bench, by the way. Cancellieri not doing it in his country, of course. Uh, Italy as we win the game anyway. Fratesi does. And Hoyland against his former club. Get in. Just what we needed to get done. As we have Spurs next. Okay, so a lot of the good teams actually getting through. I would have preferred Seville. Look at this for a start to the month. Spurs at home, Spurs away, and then Spurs away. It's a bit of a Spursy month. And the first game's at the Valley. So let's see what we can do against Tottenham. We are without Captain Skriniar. Not good. But the result is... Please, no funny business. No funny business. We've got Skriniar back, who is going down in ratings. And we do win the game 2-1. We're into a semi-final. Surely not a season one walkthrough again. We've got Liverpool. That means City, I think, went through and are through probably in the second leg. Whoever they play, Milan, Seville... It's going to be hard. That's if we get there, of course. That's if we get there. I'm not speaking too soon. We're at the Valley again. Please just find a way to get a result, lads. Any way possible. 2-2. Two, two. Right, I'll take that. Nordi Madueke. Cancellieri. Cancels them out twice. And we're at Anfield. We're at Anfield with a position in the Champions League final. Under threat. But we've done it. Vanderson. And then Malassia and Hoyland. Of course it's Hoyland to do it for us. I cannot believe we've just done that. Guys, we're, ju we're just addicted. Addicted to getting into the Champions League final. At the first time of asking, but please don't be City that we have. Milan, we play. They beat City 4-0. So City were brilliant, winning every competition in England. But then Milan's won 4-0. I'm still worried now. We're at the Benfica Stadium for the final. But of course, did we beat City maybe to the league? I, I don't know. Are they, are they not that good anymore? No, we finished sixth. Europa League next year, yay. Any competitions? West Ham won the FA Cup, so there's no chance of Europa, I don't think. And City, who did win a Carabao. I always forget how it works out, but I do get help from you guys in the comments, which I do appreciate highly. As Rasmus Hoyland, top scorer, with Kozlowski second, Cancellieri, Fratesi, Ngankam. We've really gone to Germany and Italy a lot in this save, and Poland for the midfielders. But can they all do it? Mixed together. 
for the final in Portugal. Here we go. The best stadium to play finals as well. We've got Hoyland in the red. We've got a stadium in red. Then I'm in red. Just ignore the Marvel logo. We don't get sponsored by them. As here we go. Let's win this. Skriniar leading the lads out to glory. We've desperately got to win this. It will be a team in red winning as well as that's over the top. Fratesi has got a bit of a run on in front of Cancellieri into Hoyland. No way. No way have we just started off perfectly right there. That is a goal for Hoyland. Rasmus just walked into the middle. And we already have the lead. Keeper, though. I think it's Mike Miagen in the goal. Our number 10 just spins on the spot with three men still in front of him. Mike Miagen, you've got to be saving it. Maybe it is the new room, new look, as we have looked out a little bit there. A block in the way, and the whistle's blowing out loud right there. Screen out with a free kick given away. Don't really know how I get that off as the free kick whipped him with a cross. It does fall back to the Milan man. Don't really know who they have in their team, but Kakarever in a way gets it past Tamori and Cancellieri to run against Milan, against the team he's played before. It's a good job. We've got loads of players who've been in that division as the shot is blocked. And we're approaching half an hour into this game. I've noticed that Rafael Liao is up front for them, I think. Not even on the wing, as they've got past Montoya, who's been here quite a while for us. Working the way through in this game, Milan. They're actually growing into it. We need to make sure no chance is taken as the shot comes in from far and Bijlo saves. A great save for us right there, but a shot coming in. No, well, that's a terrible pass out, but Milan's wasting the opportunity. They're going backwards quite a lot. Montoya needs to try and get out, but it's in the middle. No tripping him up in the box as the shot comes in and it's another save. The Dutchman palmed it down to the fellow Dutchman. Malassia and Bijlo as now Cancellieri. Gets the pass out to him. Hoyland, on this break, please, you've caused damage in a final before for us with Wrexham. And that is a shot. And the chance has finished just before the halftime whistle blows out loud. I've just noticed as well, this is Caicedo's ex-club. So he wants revenge. And he's one foot to a trophy. And we need this second half to go well. But it's Edwards. That's Marcus Edwards trying to run past Malassia. You just don't stand a chance. It is an absolute belter of a tackle. As look at that from Kozlowski. He is running through now the pole on the wing. He's been brilliant for us. Maybe the number eight could try and nip it in himself. And he has. How is that going in? And how is our number eight getting a second? It is 2-0. It is the lucky room. Even though it echoes. All you can hear echoing now, though, is the fans of Charlton Athletics singing the club's name. It is a brilliant move from that touch around and then just took Mike Miagen out of the game. Two vital errors for the Frenchman, costing Milan. Insane from us. Insane. Let's get that ball around the corner. It could even be worse for them because the way we're knocking the ball around, it's just brilliant. But I've got to give a shout out to Tyrell Molassi. If we can keep a clean sheet somehow, he's got to get a mention. Goes without saying, Bijlo as well. This is a break here for Maxence Kakare. Get that ball over the top. Looks like Milan are already going out for the kill. And it's left Cancellieri through, who cuts inside and hits my gun. That was a terrible shot, actually. As a run here from Ilvanjusson just blocked straight away from Milan Skriniar. Even though he's 36, I was going to say he's done well as the pass to the side. And he has actually cost us a goal. Not done that well. He's grabbed the ball. They want to get on with it, Milan. And we've got to stop them from doing so now. Hoyland. One more goal. Not over till the whistle signals that. And of course, the whistle is going to be out loud. I haven't renewed the setting since the move. So we need to get a ball down the wing right here. Could we potentially cross this into the box for Hoyland? It's over his head. Almost Cancellieri. And four minutes left now in this game. Come on. Let's make sure we get this 2-1 victory. I don't want to go through heartbreak again, especially that it will be Europa League next. Because that's a ball slip through. It's off the crossbar, and they've missed the overhead kick. We survived just a couple of seconds more, please, as that is a foul. And the referee hasn't stopped the game, but they've hit the crossbar. And that actually may do it for us, you know. Scrini had to whack it forward straight to Mjaigen, and that does do the trick. Oh my days, I thought it was over. I thought my eyes flashed before me. I thought it was Europa League last year or next year for Charlton here. But no, we've done it. The room is a lucky charm. A sensational game of football. A sensational game of football which has been wanted by you guys suggesting Charlton. And we've got the trophy in his hands right here which is lifted by an aging screen here. We have done it. We have done it, Charlton fans. 
it's just a time to rejoice. If, of course, you do want your club doing, I'm putting on another list. I'm checking it twice, and I'm going to see which is next. At the moment, I've got a few. I see you in the comments with Shrewsbury, Stevenage. Even though I don't like them with the Grimsby little rivalry we've got at the moment. But I will take them into account. Leave your suggestions down below. And I'll see you on the next one.